kind of clerk would you call the role? Oh, the woman Tyus. Oh, the man Muhammad. Hi. Here, here, here. I'm sorry. <laughs> all the men Gunther. All the women Boyd. All the women Middlebrook. Present. All the men Narayan. Chairman Moore. Present. President Reed. Here. Four present. You have quorum. What I'd like to do this morning is hear from the the mayor's appointees. How many of them are here? How many of you guys are here? Three. We'll start with you, Mr. Mitchum. We'll start with you. Introduce yourself and tell us why you like to hold this position. Right. Well, good morning, um, Chairman Moore and members of the committee. Um, as you know, my name is John Pierre Mitchum. I am a proud resident of the Tiffany neighborhood in South City. And uh, I'd like to start and first, thank you for this opportunity to speak with you today and uh, for the potential opportunity of serving all the unique communities that make up our great city. I stand before you actually very humbled by the possible task of serving as a member of the Board of Freeholders, not just because the gravity and the scope of the work set before the board will be challenging, uh, but also because I'm humbled uh, because I consider this a special opportunity to engage our various communities by listening with the ear of my heart, not only to the concerns and fears that people may have pertaining to their understanding of what the board is charged with working on, but also their hopes and dreams of what could create a stronger uh, and a, a stronger and more prosperous future for all of our communities. I believe that my life's trajectory with uh, many of my experiences has uniquely prepared me to serve in this capacity Moving from East St. Louis to South St. Louis City at a very young age, I can say that I have spent most of my life in this great city. Upon moving to St. Louis, my parents uh, enrolled me in the school desegregation student transfer program. And while I'm thankful in many ways for that experience, I must also acknowledge that it is um, also because of that experience that at a very young age, I became intimately acquainted with the hurt, pain, and trauma that many experience because of the polarization that exists in our region. Because of this very early experience and the impact it has had on me, I can say I have a strong desire to meaningfully be a part of a solution that facilitates healing and reconciliation and that bridges the divide that has existed for quite a while throughout our communities. After graduating from high school, I was quite the athlete. Upon graduating, I was one of the top five basketball players in the St. Louis metropolitan area. That's, uh, Be careful. I, <laughs> I, I attended uh, Ledoux High School. So upon graduating, I was one of the top five basketball players in the St. Louis metro area. That's both Missouri and Illinois. And I was also one of the top five players in the state of Missouri. So I earned a scholarship to play Division I ball at one of the most diverse universities in the Midwest at UIC in Chicago. UIC in many ways was a microcosm of the city of Chicago and so the diversity I experienced there was very enriching. After graduating with a degree in psychology, I uh, decided I wanted to continue playing the game. So I was fortunate to continue playing professionally uh, in the Eastern European country of Bosnia in the city of Zenica, where I played for the Zenica Celik. Um, and so I know what it's like to live in another country. I know what it's like to experience the vulnerability of being fully immersed uh, in another country, in another culture, the language barrier, uh, things of that nature. So that's another experience that I believe uniquely suits me for this role. After finishing my career, I decided to come back to St. Louis where I began working in the mental health field right here in the city. And while I was working as a mental health community support worker, uh, I had the experience of seeing a side of St. Louis that most people uh, don't see. I had a chance to see the pain, the trauma, and the hurt. And I was reminded of this harsh reality years later when I was selected to serve as a grand juror here in the city for a time span of two months a few years ago. After working in the mental health field for some time, I decided I wanted to proactively be a part of the solution to the harsh realities I was observing, which led to my transition into the field of education. Over time, I acquired additional education and expertise Concentrating, concentrating and honing my professional skill set 
in the realm of facilitating organizational change through social justice, equity, and inclusion. Now I'm a licensed therapist and a provider for the Mental Health Collaborative right here in the city at Casa de Salud, where I'm fortunate and I have the opportunity to work with members of both the LGBTQ and immigrant communities. In addition to this, I also serve as a director of equity and inclusion at St. Louis Priory School in Creve Corps. Again, it is with all of this personal and professional experience in tow that I approach the possibility of this role through the lens of ensuring everyone's voice is heard and given adequate respect and consideration while listening deeply and creatively with the intent to turn constituent input into mutually agreeable action. I obviously um, absolutely love this city. I love the people in this city and I have to say I love all of this city and the surrounding region. That's why I decided to move back to St. Louis. That's why my wife and I decided to raise a family here. This fact is evidenced by the activities of me and my family. While we live in the Tiffany neighborhood in South City, my youngest six-year-old son participates in a basketball league in North County. My middle eight-year-old son participates in an amazing Building Futures program in Old North St. Louis. As for myself, I have the privilege, I've had the privilege, even though I recently stepped down, I served as the president of the Tiffany Community Association for the last three years. And again, I work in the city and in Creve Core. I also have parents who reside in the city of Ferguson with my mother at one time serving on the city council, making it majority African American for the first time in the city's history, which ultimately allowed for the federal consent decree for Ferguson to pass. And I also have a couple of relatives who are police officers here in the city. So I look forward to leveraging all of my expertise and experiences for the greater good of all within the St. Louis region. And I wanna thank you again for the potential opportunity of serving in this capacity. Thank you. Does any members have any questions for Mr. Mitchum? A comment, maybe. Got a question. Uh, Joe, I have to go through my That's committee fine. first. Okay, Joe, make it short. <coughs> it is. No, I'm just, I was more of a, you sound very qualified, and we probably need a psychologist at this board. So uh, I just thought when you were talking about that, I thought, well, this might be the perfect place for you. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Okay. Dwayne Evans. Good morning, every. Good morning, everyone. I, I don't think I really need this mic. <laughs> I'm used to speaking with a large outside voice because I had been an educator for 34 years. I was educate, educated in the city of St. Louis. Went to. How can I say this? Well, grew up in Car Square Village. I later went to O'Fallon Technical High School. Graduated from there. Went to Harris Teachers College at that time, which is now called Harris Stowe Teachers College University. And uh, I have done a variety of things in my walk to get to where I am today. I um, received my master's of education at Lindenwood University. Believe it or not, I took the test, got my license as a real estate agent. I became a certified massage therapist. I worked at Snooks for 19 and a half years, as well as teaching for 34 years, two in the city, 32 in Normandy. Um, 
I also belong to a sorority, Delta Sigma Theta. During my educational reign, I was chair as well as a representative of the Professional Development Committee. I believe that I can add an educational aspect to this group. I'm interested in serving on the Board of Freeholders because I have been a lifelong resident of the city of St. Louis. I would love to see parts of the city return to the grandeur that it once was. I believe I represent the interests of the constituents of the city of St. Louis North Side. Um, and would bring, as I said, an educator's point of view to the board of freeholders as, the, as they decide if the city and county can work collaboratively for the best interest of the metropolitan area. There's a lot that I can talk about, but sometimes people say I talk too much once I get started. Don't do it. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to leave it at that. And if there are any questions that you need to ask me, I hope that I can answer them. Are there any questions for Ms. Evans? Comment again. Thank you, Ms. Evans. I can't sure. comment then. You have a question, Joe? No comment. Go ahead. Oh. No, just I was listening to you, and you sound very qualified, but I would hope that when you get there, you represent all of St. Louis, not just a part of St. Louis. When you said, I feel like I can represent only this part, keep in mind that we want to be diverse and we want to represent the whole city. It's, it's about, you know, and that was a little bit, you know, when I heard that, I thought, well, is this the best to be if you're only going to represent a portion of the city? If you get and you're on there, I would say please represent the whole city. Not just I definitely would represent all of the city of St. Louis. And, uh, I just threw that in there because I have grown up. That's where I grew up mostly, most of my childhood and my life. And, but I have also been in other parts of the city. So yes, without a doubt, I can represent all aspects of the city of St. Louis. Okay, thank you. That was just a comment. For okay. Me. Anyone else? Okay, you're welcome. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee. Uh, it's my pleasure to be back down here in this <laughs> distinguished room. Um, my name is Antonio French. I am a resident of the 21st Ward, uh, the O'Fallon neighborhood, born and raised. Um, I served in several capacities in public service over the years as a committee man uh, down here in the Board of Aldermen for eight years, uh, several boards. Um, I currently am a publisher of uh, two newspapers, the North Side and the South Side newspaper, as well as MetroSTL.com. Uh, I also own several businesses in the city. Uh, I appreciate this opportunity to come speak to you today, uh, and also this opportunity to possibly serve on this distinguished uh, board of freeholders. Um, I think the need is clear that both the city and the county uh, are experiencing population decline, um, problems that have kept neighborhoods and entire communities back for many, many years and decades. Uh, I see this as an opportunity to listen to ideas, uh, listen to perspectives from people across the region. Um, and I think what is required is to have members on this board who are open um, to the perspective of others, who have open minds, who are willing to work with people, and who don't see compromise as a bad word. Um, I see this as an opportunity for the region to um, look at 
our problems holistically, finally, not in terms of just our wards or just our political boundaries, but holistically looking at the entire region and seeing that we are not succeeding as a region. Uh, what can we do to better cooperate? What can we do to improve the lives of people in this community? What can we do to make this a more attractive place for people to stay and raise their families and for people to move to? Uh, so again, I appreciate the opportunity and I'm open to any questions that you might have. Any questions from Mr. French? Mine would be a comment, but he's going to go through the board first. Yeah. You Joe, you need to join this committee. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just want to say no problem. we're not only are we friends, but we work together. And one of the things that I liked about you when you were on the board, it wasn't only about your neighborhood. It was always about the whole city. And, of course, people would write bad stuff about us because we voted in common a lot because a lot of things that affect North affect South. And the one thing I could say, and I think everybody here knows it, that you would be probably a, a spectacular choice, and I would hope that we make a good decision because I, I know your reputation. And again, you don't only have a North side, you have a South side paper. You don't concentrate because you know whatever happens North affects South, what goes South affects North. And I was sad when you left, although me and John get along pretty well. But uh, anyway, it, I would hope that as a, as a group and as the board, we get you in there because you would have a very good insight. And I appreciate all your hard work. I appreciate it, Joe. Thank you. It, it was always a pleasure to work with you. Uh, I have a general question for all three. Uh, I'd like to start back in the order that you all came in. Uh, Pierre, uh, Duane, and then uh, followed by uh, Alderman, former Alderman French. Um, uh, the issues of public safety and um, the reform of our court system and criminal, criminal justice reform is a big issue and I think we need to look at it, you know, regionally because, you know, it's not like you have to drive 100 miles to get to St. Louis County. Uh, what are your ideas and what do you view as some of the key things that we should address in, in addressing it and how would you, how would you begin to, to express your views of that with the entire group of freeholders? Um. In, in my experience, in my professional career, I've had the um, opportunity to work within the realm of restorative justice um, and the implementation of that concept within the school system, restorative practices, but restorative practices is birthed out of the restorative justice paradigm um, that started within the criminal justice. Uh, I am also a participant of the St. Louis Area Restorative Justice Collaborative, so that's really what I would bring to the conversation. Part of that is a paradigm shift in terms of how we approach the idea of safety in our communities um, from a retributive paradigm to more of a restorative paradigm, which considers the ways in which folks have been harmed and how we can repair that harm and things that can be done to make it right. So as we think about it systemically, you know, the part of the con what I would bring to the conversation is how can we, as a, as a conglomerate of communities, look at this sa safety issue from a harm standpoint, and what can we do collectively to leverage our resources to expand uh, um, services that look at alternative ways of addressing harm and including our criminal justice system in that process. There are, there are, there are things that are already happening in the city, so I would say, and the county, look at what's working and see if we can't duplicate that and, and you know, expand that throughout okay. the region. Okay. Uh, Ms. Evans? Could you repeat the question again? Yeah. Um, no, so looking at, no, looking, at, look, looking at the uh, issues of, of, of public safety and uh, criminal justice reform, I think is a, you know, one of the, one of the issues that should be, uh, you know, the top issues that this board of freeholders uh, look at across the region. Uh, so what ideas would you bring to the table uh, in terms of criminal justice reform and um, uh, how would you, uh, 
how would you view the city and the county uh, addressing that, you know, in a holistic fashion? Issues of criminal justice reform and also public safety, both of those are. Criminal justice reform and public safety. Yes, because I view those two as. <laughs> right, they go hand in hand. Um, I believe that in bringing ideas to reform the criminal justice aspect of it, you have to work together, the county and city. There are some things that are working in the county, there are some things that are working in the city. They need to come together and compromise and, and see what will work for the whole picture. Um, being that some of the laws, especially regards to uh, the use of marijuana, it's no longer, I guess you could say, the uh, the part where people are locked up for that since uh, states are starting to legalize that. Uh, people that are in our systems for those types of offenses, hopefully they will be looked at and judged accordingly in the, in the county as well as the city. Uh, safety, we need to have in place where um, our police should give services to both the county and the, and the city. As far as the city, all over the city, police need to step up their, their gains as far as patrolling the area. I don't think that enough is being done because you see rampant, um, you, <clears throat> excuse me, you see rampant violations of the city, uh, people running red lights. Uh, where do we get that, that disrespectfulness? I'm hoping that we can come with a solution so that we can address those, quest, those, those types of actions and make our city a better and safer place. Okay, thank you. French? Criminal justice reform and public safety. Good, thank you. And uh, I, I do believe that these things are closely related. Um, you know, I, remember, I think that crime and violence especially is still the top priority here in the city of St. Louis. That is the number one problem in St. Louis City. Mm -hmm. It is the reason primarily people are leaving neighborhoods. It is why people feel unsafe in so many parts of the city. Uh, it is why uh, the city and the region, in fact, gets such a bad reputation and sometimes it is hard to attract talent and businesses to move here. Mm -hmm. So we have to address that. We remain one of the most violent places in the country year after year after year and that has to change. Uh, we have to start looking at that as a regional problem, though. That is not a problem that is isolated just to those neighborhoods that are actually seeing those numbers. It is something that affects us all, uh, and it needs to be treated as a regional problem. So I think uh, I would like to see this Board of Freeholders look at that situation. Uh, it is not something exclusive to the city. It also exists in the county, especially in the northern part of St. Louis County. So we have to transform that. People need to feel that they are safe in their communities. Now that's closely related to criminal justice reform because people also need to feel that they are being uh, protected equally under the law, that they are being treated equally. Uh, and of course I got to see firsthand in 2014 what happens when people do not feel that the system is working for them, that they don't feel that it's fair. Uh, and so in my time down at the board, um, with the help and leadership of you and uh, former Alderman Kennedy, we did pass a civilian oversight board bill. I sponsored that bill. Um, we got that passed. That is an effort to help rebuild that trust between community and the police. Still a lot of work that needs to be done on that to strengthen it, but it's a first step. But that is a critical step that has to happen. People have to feel that the police are there to serve them, not to just uh, oversight them or not just to per persecute them. Uh, and so rebuilding that relationship is critical. 
have some other questions, but I'll wait till other members get in. Any other questions? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. I have a if question, I'll be in the ranking member here. <laughs> Point of order. You need five votes from this committee to take this matter off the table. It has been very well established. There were only, I just looked at the uh, attendance sheet. There were only four people here. You had a quorum, but you did not have enough to take it off of the table. I'm the fifth person here, and I, you would need my vote to take this issue off of the table. This is not properly before the committee, and that's my point of order. It has not properly been taken off the, com the table because you did not have five votes. It is not the majority of the committee here. It is two-thirds of the committee, and two-thirds of the committee is a five votes. And point of order, that was not established because there's only four people was here until I even got here. So if we have done a motion to take it off the table, then it was inappropriate because you didn't have the votes. And I will ask you to do another motion while I'm here, since we do have five people, and my vote will be still no. Not to take it, I'm not talking to you because you're not the chair. This is the chair right here, Mr. President. And who I'm talking to is the chair of the committee. Alderman Moore, would you like me to weigh in on that? I'm not, I'm not talking to you, and I've, I didn't ask you to weigh in. I know who I'm talking to, and I, you don't need to weigh in on it. We have a chair of the committee. That's the problem. What's before us is not to take it off the table. We're interviewing the, the appointees of the okay. chair. Can I have a please? And the appointees aren't on the table. We'll take a minute. Mr. Chair, if it's, if it's okay with you, I would like to propose one question to the three nominees that are present. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. Uh, my question is, in regards to this entire process that has been birthed out of the Better Together scheme and plan that was being proposed, um, what was your biggest frustration and disappointment with that entire plan, and why do you think or do you think it would have been successful or unsuccessful uh, based on the current plan that was proposed to us as, as it relates to Bella Together? You said what was my, if I, if I had any frustrations with it, mm -hmm. and then the second part was? Um, go ahead. Essentially, what do you think would have been productive or successful with this city and county merger, or would have, or vice versa, would have been what would have been unsuccessful with that merger? Um, I guess, from my perspective, if I had to reflect on any frustrations, I think. Um, from what I read about, things that I'm hearing or that I heard, I, I just feel like um, the whole process was just still indicative of, of the polarization that exists in our, in our region. I, I'm, I like to think that I'm an eternal optimist and you know, I, had, I was hopeful um, that it would have provided some, some substantial uh, recommendations to the region to help make us stronger um, so long as it was done in a very equitable and inclusive way um, that nev we never had a chance to see that play out. Uh, I think that had it moved forward, um, it had potential, uh, but there were some serious reservations on, on part of key parts of our community. And I think that even with this process, um, in order for it to be effective, we, we have to, um, as Alderman French said, compromise is not a bad word. And I would also like to add and say that conflict is not a bad word. Conflict is neutral. Um, conflict is, it's not, it's, it's how you respond to conflict that matters, right? Um, but conflict is neutral and it's essential uh, in order to move forward and to get to um, resolutions and ideas that we all can agree on and leverage for positive action and change. 
Um, I think it's the absence of conflict that creates strife and discord. Um, but when we can embrace conflict and we can get through the conflict and identify, <coughs> acknowledge where we disagree, you know, we have to agree to disagree and make that known. If we can get through that and find where we do agree, uh, then we can kind of coalesce around that and, and, and leverage that for positive action and change. And so I was hopeful that that could have happened through that process. Uh, obviously, it was um, derailed, but I think it's my sentiments are the same with this process. Uh, with the folks coming from the city and the county, it's important that uh, we, we approach that table with the considerations of all the concerns of our constituents from where we come from establish those concerns and non-negotiables, if you will, uh, get to the conflict so we can get through the conflict, and then find out where we do agree and leverage those points of agreement for positive action and change. So. One, of, <clears throat> one of my concerns, <clears throat> one of my concerns was transparency on, on both parts. In other words, what is it that the county has to gain and what is it that the city has to gain? What's being offered? Who is going to take control over the 28 wards of the city of St. Louis? and merge it with the county? Will we continue to have representation? Will we be able to get things done and receive the resources and services uh, that we have been receiving? Will we receive more? I'm not sure. But those are part of my concerns, and that is that Will the city lose its stronghold? Will it lose its representation? How will we function? And I am not sure as to how, what that looks like and would like to know, uh, do we concede to the county? I don't know. Will we be equitable? Those are some of my concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I think the fatal flaw of the Better Together plan was that uh, it was not done in an inclusive way at all. Um, whatever proposal is put forward in front of both the city and county voters is going to be a tough sale. You know, St. Louis is not known as a region that is very receptive to change, especially uh, drastic change. Uh, and so it's going to have to be done in a way that builds support, gets people on board, um, listens to the concerns of, of each section of the region, county and city. Um, something that actually makes people feel that it will improve the quality of their lives and they feel like they had a say in it. Um, I, that was not done in, in that Better Together led process. Um, that is something that I would definitely push for in this process. Uh, would also push for transparency at every step of the way. There shouldn't be any secrets of the Board of Freeholders. Uh, people should be able to see the entire process from beginning to end um, and to feel that it was done in a way that is actually done in the spirit of improving the lives of folks who live in this community. Um, and you need to build that level of trust because the proposal, the proposal that you put forward at the end of the process, um, you're going to have to get the majority of folks in the city and the county to approve. The only way that's going to be done is if it's done in a way that makes people feel like um, it is going to improve the quality of their lives. Um, so th that's my opinion about that. I think that on the board of freeholders, what you're looking for are folks who understand the, necess the necessary um, transparency that is required to get people to have input, to have buy-in. Uh, and you also want people who understand that we are going to have to work together and compromise and look at the entire region, not just different sections, our own sections. Um, one of the parts that came out of the Better Together proposal that I was 
most critical of, uh, and, and I'm on the record of never being a supporter of the city simply joining the county as a 91st municipality. The last thing St. Louis County, in my opinion, needs is another municipality. Um, we need to consolidate a bit, uh, not just in the city, but also in the county. But I was not at all pleased with the idea that uh, a Steve Stinger uh, was going to all of a sudden be in charge of my neighborhood, having no knowledge or experience there. You know, so it's got to be done in a way that makes people feel like um, whatever comes out of this process is going to be an improvement. And if they feel it's difficult right now to get anything out of government and it's right down the street at City Hall, uh, for folks in my neighborhood, what they're concerned about is how are we going to get better results if now we have to go to Clayton? Um, so you want to make sure that this process is done in a way and that the proposal that comes out at the end is something that actually makes an improvement to people's lives uh, and not make it more difficult for them to get government to work on their behalf. Just a follow-up question. Yeah. Uh, Autumn, I know you, you also mentioned transparency. I'm sorry. You also mentioned transparency, and I know um, – uh, in, in, in past years in the Board of Aldermen, you sponsored a policy that will record committee hearings and different uh, uh, meetings of special boards and commissions in the city of St. Louis that has a direct impact on neighborhoods. Uh, would you also welcome that same policy and transparency with the Board of Freeholders? Would you advocate that yeah, amongst absolutely. the Freeholders the, Group? Yeah, absolutely. The, the bill you're talking about is was actually called the Transparency in Government Law that we passed uh, in, in here in uh, in the city, which is why this committee hearing is being recorded and people will be able to watch it on YouTube. Uh, that bill also created the official YouTube channel of the city of St. Louis. Uh, I do think that these meetings of the Board of Freeholders need to be public, they need to be recorded, they need to be, I would propose too, also on, on YouTube uh, for people to be able to watch at their convenience in the way that people do in modern society. Um, so transparency, I think, at every step of the way is something I'd advocate for. Absolutely. Thank you, Alderman. Thank you. Any other questions? I want to thank everybody for coming out. Can I move to adjourn? I entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. I move that we adjourn this meeting. Second. This meeting is adjourned. All in favor? Call the roll. Yeah. All the woman tires? <laughs> need to vote to adjourn and this uh, matter is not properly before us so I'm abstaining. Alderman Muhammad? Aye. Alderman Gunther? Alderman Boyd? Alderman Middlebrook? Aye. Alderman Ryan? Chairman Moore? Aye. President Reed? Aye. Four aye votes and one abstain.